four, three, two, one. Lift off the Falcon 9. Drop AVIRC and GNC and proceed to procedure 3.170 for post launch flight operation. GC, move to section post launch pad operations to secure the pad on net A. Moving to post launch pad operations. Two plus one minute and 17 seconds into flight. You've heard the call out. Falcon 9 performance is nominal as we head downrange over the Pacific Ocean, flying south from the launch site at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. We're passing through the region of maximum dynamic pressure right now. This is where the high pressure of the atmosphere combines with the speed of the rocket to provide the greatest stresses on the Falcon 9 vehicle. We throttle the engines down as we pass through this phase and throttle them back up as we proceed on into orbit. The major activity coming up will be main engine cutoff at T plus 2 minutes and 25 seconds. We'll listen for that, followed shortly after by stage separation and then ignition of the second stage engine. Let's listen in as the Falcon 9 continues to head downrange, preparing for shutdown of the first stage and stage separation and ignition of the second stage. seconds into flight. We've had successful shutdown separation of the Falcon 9 first stage. The second stage engine is lit. You can see it there. We're coming up on three minutes as we head into low Earth orbit. Everything looking good. So as you just heard from John Insprucker, it, so it sounds like the uh, Falcon 9 first stage has successfully separated from the second stage and the second stage engine has successfully ignited. It means we're on our way to orbit. <laughs> so, uh, Following that awesome success, there's still a lot more to go. Um, one of the cool things that's about to happen is we are going to begin the recovery operations, or rather the first stage flyback operations. Uh, that's going to consist of a uh, that flip maneuver where the rocket is moving in one direction and it will actually flip itself over. Uh, then it will begin, it will light the engines on the back end and that will begin a boost back burn to bring the first stage back towards the drone ship. Uh, next up, I think we have a re-entry burn. Uh, and that'll slow down the rocket from about two kilometers per second uh, down to one kilometer per second. It's still really fast, but any sort of decrease of energy that you can get in moving that direction is, is going to be better for decreasing the aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle. And the last and final burn coming up just a little bit later is going to be the landing burn. That's when the first stage, uh, right as it gets close to the deck of Just Read the Instructions, slows itself down, opens up its landing legs, and prepares for a soft touchdown on the deck of the autonomous spaceport drone ship. And just to remind you guys, this is an experimental secondary part of this mission today, but obviously something we all get really, really excited about here. Um, but the primary mission is uh, launching these satellites, right? Mm -hmm. I believe we, we've already separated the fairing. Uh, and that's to get rid of the excess weight, uh, the excess mass, rather, so that for the same force you can accelerate faster. Uh, it's, again, moving at eight kilometers per second is the final goal uh, to be circling the Earth, um, which is, again, ten times the speed of a rifle bullet. Uh, as much help as you can get to minimize the amount of mass that you need to accelerate to that speed is better. 
Yeah, the fairing is kind of like, a, it's just a big windshield for the satellite. Satellites really aren't built to withstand intense aerodynamic forces because they're meant to operate inside the vacuum of space. Um, so what we do is we lose that fairing as soon as we get out of the atmosphere, and that's where we are right now. Yes, and so, oh, look at that. You can see that the first aid squid fins are deployed. Now those squid fins are powered by nitrogen thrusters, and they're used to actually steer and guide the rocket back down to Earth. Uh, they're useful both at high speeds when you're moving at very supersonic and again when you're starting to move slower, um, but not when you're going through the transition of the speed of sound. They become less helpful.